Hello and welcome to another video and podcast from fantasyfootballscout.co.uk. My name is David and today we're going to continue our series of FPL scout reports where we have a look at new players to the Premier League, perhaps some who have changed one top flight club for another or in some instances their managers as well. And it is in the first of those three categories that we are going to operate today because we are going to have a look at one Musa Diaby who is already making waves in the Fantasy Premier League community and the wider football network as well as he has moved to Aston. Aston Villa, uh, a club record fee of £51.9 million, which is a huge amount of money uh, for Villa as they look pretty good for the start of the new season. They've brought in Torres and Tielemans as well. But crucially here, this is a player that was being linked with some really big clubs or at the very least some really rich clubs specifically. Uh, Arsenal, PSG and Newcastle were among many of the names that were all trying to get hold of this guy and it is a little bit of a coup for them to have brought him to Villa Park. And he's come into FPL with a price tag of six. 6.5 million, which of course puts him in that beautiful midfield, uh, mid price midfield category that we've got lots of options this season. Uh, it's nice to have players in that position. Normally, we're, you know, turning over every rock to try and find one. This year, they are here in abundance, which arguably makes our life even more difficult because we've got to work out which is the best one or perhaps maybe two to go with. And it's that question that we're going to answer today. What impact is he going to have on Aston Villa in the Premier League? And is he going to be worth owning in our FPL teams? Now, before I go any further, of course, I have to remind you guys uh, that the uh, time is running out for you to get your best deal on Fantasy Football Scout membership. You can save up to 30% of those pre-season prices and uh, the countdown uh, continues continues to tick along. It's not that long until the game week deadline now. We've got one more full week before the start of FPL, which of course starts on the evening of uh, game week. Uh, game week one starts on the evening of Friday the 11th. So make sure you get that sorted. You're going to get access to the world leading pre-season guide for all the teams, exclusive pre-season minutes tracker, season points projections, team transfer planners, drafts from the best fantasy managers around, including some former winners. And as many of you will know and have seen in a lot of the videos and podcasts that we've done, you know, all of those comparison tools and tables a lot of that is part of uh, the Fantasy Football Scout membership as well, which you'll also get access to. I also owe a vote of thanks, of course, to the Fantasy Football Scout editorial team. They've done a great job of tracking these new signings throughout the summer, Neil and Tom and Mark. Specifically today, uh, it's his efforts that have helped uh, uh, fuel this article on Diaby. And uh, yeah, it's a lot of his work's gone into this. But if you want to read that info and get more information, then do head to the website, fantasyfootballscout.co.uk and have a longer read of what is there. But yes, let's uh, dive on in and have a look at Musa Diaby, who is, yeah, as I said, a highly sought after player uh, for many, many reasons, done very well in the Bundesliga up until now. Uh, and it does appear that he might well have chosen Aston Villa because he did actually work with Emery before. Uh, he was in charge uh, when Diaby was a youngster at his hometown uh, club of PSG. Uh, and the interesting thing is he's one of a couple of players who was uh, a, a big, exciting young player. He actually won the 2016 uh, TT d'Or uh title award uh, for being one of the club's most promising academy talents but he had to go elsewhere like we saw with Coman uh, and Nkunku to find uh, regular football and it, it was at uh, Bayer Leverkusen where he uh, really found it after uh, a loan at Crotone in Syria um, interestingly enough went there um, to try and get some game time uh, lo- you know a lowly Syria team and ended up only playing 69 minutes because the manager wanted more experienced players for the relegation fight so it took him a little bit of time uh, to really get some regular football and it was at Bayer Leverkusen where that happened and where it has continued and what we've got on the screen uh, is the last five campaigns that he has been involved in and the thing is even when he was at PSG and not necessarily starting too many games 10 starts and 15 substitute appearances in 2018-19 campaign for PSG two goals and six assists which is not too bad from uh, those limited uh, minutes there and yeah it was that four-year spell at Bayer Leverkusen where he really kicked on 69 domestic goal involvements two Champions League goals and uh, yeah going into detail on those just continued to get better and better in many ways because his first season in Germany 18 starts 10 substitute appearances five goals five assists this is in the league, I should say. Uh, then in a 2021 campaign, 28 starts, so 10 more starts than the previous campaign, four goals, 12 assists, so very much an assist maker then. But then it was the next two seasons where he started to add goals of his own to what he was producing on the pitch. 21-22, 32 starts, none as a sub, uh, 13 goals, 12 assists uh, in the league. And then 22-23, 33 starts, no, none as a sub, nine goals, nine assists as well. And the interesting thing is, is that what he was doing in Europe as well was also quite useful and, of course, in the cup competitions. And so only three players from Europe's big five leagues 
uh, managed to reach 10 plus goals and 10 plus assists in all competitions in each of the last three campaigns. Bruno Fernandes and Lionel Messi were two of those, so big names there. And Moussa Diaby was the third. So that's incredible keep company to be keeping. And of course, decent consistency over a three year period, which is one of the reasons why he's been highly sought after. And one of the reasons why it's very exciting that he's at Villa, 6.5 million price tag as well. And so. Yeah, lots of excitement. How does he do that, though? How has he produced all of that? What sort of player is he? Well, um, thanks to whoscored.com with their excellent uh, breakdown of what players are good at. He's good at through balls, uh, hence the assists there. Good at finishing and key passes. His weaknesses are aerial duels, discipline and defensive contribution, but as a sort of attacking flair winger, you know, it's not too surprising to see that. It doesn't necessarily have to be a massive issue. And then his style of play specifically, he likes to dribble. He's a good counter-attacking threat and he does not dive in two tackles. All of that has helped him uh, play for France as well. So he's played alongside uh, Mbappe and Griezmann, for example. So he's really honing this uh, these abilities and... Uh, Looks very good coming into the Premier League. He's a left-footed dribbler, capable of like quite uh, powerful drilled shots. But he's also quite versatile as well, which will be useful for Villa because he has started predominantly on the left-hand side for Leverkusen, but can play uh, on the right-hand side as well. The official Bundesliga website has made comparisons with Iron Robin, for example, in the past. Uh, although, interestingly enough, perhaps the best line of comparison is perhaps Mohamed Salah, which feels, you know, maybe perhaps a grandiose thing to say. You know, he's a, he's a big, important FPL asset this season, perhaps less so than in previous campaigns, but not because we think he's a bad player. He's certainly one of the best players the Premier League has to offer. So we've really got to justify this comparison. And it's not too difficult a uh, comparison to justify, to be honest. Uh, Opta Analyst has done some really nice radar charts about DRB, trying to give you an idea of what types of players he's similar to based on the playing style, uh, breaking down all the different attributes of players and identifying which players have the closest um, map uh, on the radar to him. And the top four were Raheem Sterling with a 74.9% um, similarity score, Salah with 70.8%, Son with 70.3%, and then Arno Loriente uh, on 65.8%. And those of you watching the video can see that uh, on the screen. Those of you listening on podcasts, I'm just going to briefly talk through it. And so the different categories that are on this Opta Analyst radar chart are uh, goals, shots, Touches in the box, aerials one, possession one, uh, defensive actions, touches, um, goals uh, attempted, so uh, and then uh, chances created. And so with with sorry, it's dribbles created. There's so much information there. It's dribbles created, chances created. Uh, and rather than these being raw figures, these are uh, percentile ranks versus other forwards with at least 1,350 minutes played last season. And just to clarify, when Opta talks about forwards, that does include wingers like Diaby, Sterling, Salah, Wayne and FPL, their midfielders. So hopefully that hasn't scared anybody that Salah's made some sort of summer switch to being a forward. And yeah, in terms of those percentile ranks, um, 41, uh, a rank of 41 for goals, 57 for shots, uh, 86 for touches in the box. Uh, then possessions one is 40, uh, touches 58, uh, dribbles attempted 71, and chances created 88. And it's all very similar figures for those specific stats for Sterling and uh, Salah especially. And the shape, if you're wondering for some sort of comparison, if you've seen the album cover for Royal Blood's Typhoons, is very much like that. Circle, lots of things pointing out in different directions. And all of them are different because if you've got players that are better at aerials one or defensive actions, it's going to look uh, very different. Uh, these these guys are players who are ranking very highly for dribbles attempted, ch uh, chances created, touches, touches in the box, shots and goals. So a goal scoring, assist making winger like we've seen with Sterling when he's been at his best, like we've seen with Son when he's at his best, and crucially, like we've seen with Salah as well. So it's really interesting just how similar a uh, makeup this player, Diaby, has compared to some players who in the past have offered a lot of FPL uh, potential. Going into slightly more detail on some of these things, he's very, very quick, and so it's his devastating pace that really is an asset to any team that wants to counter-attack with him in. Uh, and actually, last season, he recorded a speed of 22.68 miles per hour which was the fourth fastest in the Bundesliga uh, and so you know we've seen Emery want to try and play that style of football as well so he's going to be very very important for those counter-attacks uh, as well and it's possible that he's due a goal uh, I know that's a bit of an expression that some people have have a problem with but when we look at his expected data from last season um, there's a few things that 
kind of show us that maybe he needs to well maybe this season he is is going to get back to a previous level now we saw that his goal tally and his assist tally did actually slightly drop last season compared to 21 22 in the league um so the but the crazy thing here is his underlying stats actually improved and this is a really interesting thing to look at for anybody who's perhaps maybe new to some of the the underlying data that we talk to on fantasy football scouts sometimes it's all very well and good looking at how many points an fpl player scored it's all very well and good looking at how many goals and assists they got but what were the numbers underpinning that and you know for example you see some players overperform against their xg historically that's difficult to sustain unless you're a truly world-class player and then sometimes you see someone consistently underperforming against their xg and that perhaps indicates that they're not very good because they get lots of chances and they can't score them for example so hopefully that's a helpful explainer before this little section here which just as i said shows that even though drb regressed slightly in terms of his specific goal and assist output he wasn't playing any worse he was actually arguably uh, playing better but just being a bit unfortunate and underperforming against that xg so uh, in 21 22 season 13 goals in the league for drb just nine the following campaign however his xg for that season where he scored 13 goals was eight so he overperformed against his xg by a total of five there uh, however his xg for last season actually went up by three goals to 11 and he scored two fewer than that so he underperformed uh, by two goals there um, and that uh, higher xg tally largely came from the fact that he was just shooting way more often so 53 shots uh, in 21 22 campaign in Bundesliga for DRB, 79 for him uh, the following campaign. And there's similar minutes played. So, you know, a real shift for the player. 26 shots on target in that season where he um, got 13 goals, up to 34 last time out. His goals per shot for the 21 22 camp- campaign was 0.25. Of course, it went down to 0.11. You know, he was having l- more shots but scoring fewer goals. So, it's slightly more of a volume shooter. Uh, but his shots per 90 went from 1.73 to 2.63, which is very, very very impressive uh, jump amongst all Bundesliga players last season he ranked fourth for shots on goal with 79 fifth for putting them on target as well with that 34 and yeah doing also very favorably for that shots per 90 uh, where that came from was he had a lot of support on the right hand side uh, from the right back Jeremy Frimpong uh, he provided a lot of the width for Leverkusen uh, which meant that Diaby could drift uh, into a more central location from uh, the wing position that he was on a little bit again, like Salah, where we have seen in the past where he's able to drift inside either because maybe a Henderson has moved into that right-hand wing position from central midfield or an Alexander-Arnold has pushed into some kind of overlap into that area. So he's used to making that kind of run. Uh, and you have to say that at Aston Villa, he does have uh, players who could help him continue to do that. Now, we don't necessarily know which of the wingbacks, are, or the fullbacks, we should say, which of the fullbacks are going to pl- play regularly. Are they going to be used as wingbacks? Emery has already talked about in preseason trying lots of different things. We've seen Konsa used at right back uh, so that they can push Dina further forward and move into a back three uh, and go asymmetrical at times. You know, they do have the personnel to put... Torres as the left back and then push cash forward the other way which we've seen them do in their most recent preseason game but at the very least we are fairly confident Diaby would start games and there's chances of course that cash or Moreno when he's fit or Dina before Moreno is fit are the sorts of players who can overlap into those wider areas and allow Diaby to move centrally which is quite exciting and that's a good segue into the wider Aston Villa context because there is lots of questions here, uh, lots that we we have maybe some clues to from preseason uh, and some questions that we maybe need a few more preseason matches. And of course, if you've been listening to these podcasts or watching these videos, you'll know that you can get a lot of this information on the preseason guide on Fantasy Football Scout and the preseason minutes tracker as well. Now we know that Diaby could be used as a winger or as a forward in Emery's four-two-two-two formation. Um, Um, which would offer, obviously, out-of-position potential. We're going to talk about that in just a minute when we look specifically at some of the preseason games uh, he's been involved in. I mentioned, of course, that Emery has talked about fluidity and changing the system from one situation to another. So on the screen right now, I've got a quote from him, uh, which is, uh, you know, actually quite uh, relevant here. And, of course, it's about Diaby as well. So he's helping us, trying to improve our level of play in the attacking third, sometimes playing on the right, sometimes he's playing as a number 10, and sometimes he's playing as a left winger. He is a winger a striker and his best part is his capacity to attack dribbling and running behind he has uh, experience in Europe he's young and I think the qualities he's going to give us playing in different positions as well I think he's going to give us uh, more power 
So yeah, that's that's worth knowing that he is already sort of seeing him as someone who can play in lots of different areas. Now, broadly speaking, you know, Emery is going to want the players in his system to be quite quick, uh, have good ball carrying skills and exploit half spaces between fullbacks and centre backs because of the way that they like to counter attack. Um, we know that Villa are probably going to continue to score goals. There is a mild caveat here that we sort of identified in that they were XG overachievers last season. So, so um, after game week 15, which is when Emery arrived, Villa ranked 13 for shots on goal in the Premier League uh, and they were in 16th for shots in the box. And only Arsenal and Spurs had a greater XG delta than them. Uh, theirs was 6.28, Spurs was 7.64, Arsenal overperformed theirs by 8.62. Now, slight side point here, I'm not suggesting for a second that you should completely do away with all your Arsenal attackers, but we have loosely started to see a few uh, gaps uh, in the thinking that we should have three attackers, for example, or two attackers. They were high XG overachievers last season, as were Villa. Could that continue? That's a bit of a, uh, a headache in my mind about whether or not I'm going to go for the Villa attack. But the thing is, there is a nice flip back in the opposite direction here. You know, they did have one of the best goal conversion rates last season, 14.2%. Diaby also relatively decent with his goal conversion in 21-22, slightly less so last time out. Um, got European experience as well, 12 goals and 8 assists from 28 uh, Europa League appearances, so that shows that he can do it at a decent level. Would we see him more involved in Europe? Because, of course, Villa will play there. Then in the Premier League this season, seems unlikely. I think he's probably going to get involved in both. He's very young, and uh, Villa will still want to focus uh, on the Premier League. So there's a few little bits of Aston Villa context there uh, pre these pre-season games, which tell us a little bit more about what we might expect and so his first involvement for Villa in the preseason was a 2-0 win over Fulham so as I keep saying there is whole summer it's really really useful that this summer series is on because it means we're seeing Premier League teams going up against other Premier League teams uh, for big commercial events where they need to play some of their best teams uh, and it means we get to see the best possible test so DRB goes up against a Fulham team that does have a lot of their first choice players and that's nice to see because in that setting it took him less than half an hour to get his first goal uh, he ran on to a cross from Douglas Louise uh, and finished with a powerful trademark effort which was nice to see um, and that prospect of him playing out of position as a secondary forward behind Watkins is already generating a bit of uh, steam because that's where he played. That's where he played against Fulham and actually started the game when Watkins didn't. So uh, he was played up front alongside Cameron Archer uh, for the first part of that game. Then Archer uh, came off and Watkins came on. Archer didn't do particularly well. It was very wasteful and actually missed a penalty. And then it was uh, Watkins uh, that came on for him. It wasn't a particularly uh, eventful performance for Diaby outside of him getting that goal. But it's his first you know, outing with a new team. So we're not necessarily expecting him to set the world on fire and everybody to all be gelled properly. And yet the fact that he's still got a goal uh, is nice uh, to see. And then a few days later, Aston Villa this time up against uh, Brentford, who did very well defensively last season. Three all in that game. Uh, Villa did well to get back into that game. Must be said, another side point, I've been very big on Flecken uh, up until now because of the way that Brentford played last season uh, and the fact that the goalkeeper should largely just drop straight in for Raya. Had a similar save percentage and decent distribution last time, last season in the Bundesliga. Well, it's not going too well for him because he didn't play particularly well in this game, didn't play particularly well in the other game. So it's an interesting side point for anyone looking at Flecken. I'm not saying don't go for him, he's still in my team, but just keep an eye on those other Brentford fixtures because it hasn't been the best start for him. And someone who was able to capitalise on that was Diaby, who managed to make it two goals from two as he scored against uh, Brentford again playing up front just behind Watkins in uh, what you would describe as out of position. Nice to see as a 6.5. Lots of people have been looking at Burmo, for example. Is he playing out of position in inverted commas for Brentford with no Tony in the team? Probably isn't. He's probably playing on the right-hand side of a front three, although he actually scored a penalty in this game, uh, which is, of course, in his favour. But specifically, we are seeing someone at the same price in Diaby actually playing out of position, just behind Watkins. It's only been two games so far, so keep an eye on those other matches, which we'll talk about in a second, but it's looking good. Uh, we've got another quote about uh, Diaby out of Emery after this 3 all draw with Brentford. Again, another Premier League team. Uh, with Diaby, the most important thing now is where is his best position on the pitch? 
trying to understand when we have to find him going in behind and when he can drop to try to help us building up and stealing the ball. Both things, going in behind and dropping to get on the ball and help us keep in possession is very positive because today he did both. Uh, then it's how we can use him around other players. How can we find combinations in the positioning with the players? For example, playing with John McGinn, they both understand perfectly between them. So lots to unpack there. He's effectively saying that he's not completely settled on definitely playing him behind Watkins, which is why we need to keep an eye on his other games. But he is admitting that he does do a very good job when he is there. We also saw, just if you've cast your mind back to those radar charts, the one defensive thing uh, down the bottom of the chart where Diaby was actually looking very very good was those possessions won now they they weren't in the defensive half uh, and they, they, it's not going to be any aerial duels but how good he is at pressing in the front uh, three and in wide areas uh, and in the attacking third is worth noting that's going to help him for bonus just getting some additional tackle uh, and interception bonuses which would be nice uh, for him they won't they won't boost him as much as scoring goals and assists will but it perhaps will um, create a situation where he's more likely to score high on the bonus when he does get goals and assists and arguably might just make Aston Villa more competent uh, and uh, at scoring goals because he's going to win the ball in more dangerous areas and Emery is already saying that we are seeing that which is really nice uh, for us to see if we're considering him for FPL and that is of course our conclusion that we have to come to is is he worth signing for FPL well he looks fantastic to be honest I think that it I'm, I'm strongly considering him he's not in my team at the moment I don't know if he necessarily will be I might wait and see but the credentials on paper are very good and what we're seeing on the pitch also is very encouraging so if you put him in your team I don't think at all that that's a bad pick at all the comparisons here really are the likes of Matoma and Burmo Eze um, all in the game at 6.5 and uh, you know there's a wealth of those players you've probably at least got one maybe two and you may have to go via the fixtures and the fixtures for Villa are quite nice so um, their first game uh, away at Newcastle is of course not exactly uh, you know, a, a nice fixture because Newcastle did very well last season however Aston Villa did do quite well specifically against Newcastle last time out and so it's not necessarily the worst place to start uh, but after game week one is out of the way and you start to look at game week two and beyond, interestingly enough, the Fantasy Football Scout season ticker uh, shows that Villa have the best fixture run between game weeks two and 12. So that's Everton at home, Burnley away, Liverpool away, Palace at home, Chelsea away, Brighton at home, Wolves away, West Ham at home, Luton at home. Now, there's a couple of uh, chinks in the armour of uh, those strong fixtures. Of course, we've already talked about the Newcastle game, Liverpool away game week four, not necessarily, uh, you know, enough nice fixture it's red on the season ticker of course away at Chelsea game week six home to Brighton game week seven it's really game weeks two three five eight nine and ten when you've got Everton Burnley Palace Wolves West Ham and Luton uh, around that said uh, Liverpool's defense has been shocking of late they are conceding goals left right and center to German teams we've never heard of for example um, we've got a Chelsea team that didn't do very well for defense last season they do of course have a new manager and they've won this summer series in America as well uh, but you know when you get a new manager coming in when previously the teams had some defensive issues you know you could perhaps see a world where it takes them a little bit of time uh, to adjust uh, Brighton uh, as well uh, didn't do quite as well for clean sheets as we wanted them to towards the back end of last season they might be a score more than you team as well so I'm not enormously concerned about Villa's um, credentials to score goals against those teams. Uh, broadly speaking, Villa's fixtures are very nice. Um, they're nicer for longer than Brighton. For example, I've got Matoma at the moment, but Brighton's fixtures take a bit of a turn around game week three, for example. Um, you know, so all these considerations might come into whether or not you go for him. So think about those fixtures. We probably do need to talk about players who've come to the Premier League from the Bundesliga as well. Don't want you guys to think that I've forgotten about the the Bundesliga tax, as it's called, which is not to do the division down. But unfortunately, we have seen in the past the likes of Timo Werner, Havertz, Sancho and one Leon Bailey, of course, at Aston Villa himself come to the Premier League after a decent time in the Bundesliga and struggle to make an impact. Bailey is a good point of comparison because, you know, we, we, he's at Villa specifically, uh, hasn't done all that well. And Diaby uh, and Bailey, in terms of the Bundesliga, they're close. There is there is an obvious winner, but they're not far away from each other. So Diaby's uh, Bundesliga numbers, 9,653 minutes, 31 goals, 38 assists. Of course, that doesn't include fantasy assists, um, but Bailey's total doesn't either. Uh, Bailey's total, 7,500 minutes, 
uh, 28 goals, 21 assists. So Diaby's is slightly better, but he did play more minutes as well. Um, so you'd argue Diaby has a better chance. He's already scored some goals uh, against some Premier League teams. Of course, the club is also doing much better under Emery than it was when Bailey was uh, in, in everybody's teams at the start of last season. Um, you know, he's, he's versatile as well, so we could see him using a number of different positions and, and do well and should fit into um, this, this Villa system quite nicely. I have mentioned already that we do need to just get one final look at uh, him in pre-season where we actually get two because um, the fixtures on the screen that you can see are, are the, the big games that Villa have played there's a few they've played before against the likes of Walsall and of course but um, Diaby wasn't involved Villa against Fulham uh, Villa against Brentford if you want full match reports on that you'll catch them on Fantasy Football Scout the code at UK but what we've got coming up is Lazio uh, at, well not at home back in Birmingham but at the Walsall's uh, at Walsall's end of the woods at the Bescott Stadium and then Villa travel to Valencia on the 5th of August uh, to face to face Valencia so those two fixtures are going to give us another good test of where this Villa team is at for goals where Diaby is at for goals and assists and what role he's playing in the team so do keep an eye on those and hopefully all of these considerations will help you make the best decision you can when it comes to owning Diaby at the start of the season. Well, I hope this video was and podcast was helpful for you uh, as we look at yet another uh, shiny new face uh, in the Premier League. Uh, don't forget that uh, some of the information here was taken from the Fantasy Football Scout members area. So if you want more access to that, get your membership sorted, save up to 30% on those pre-season prices. Of course, you can also like this video and subscribe to the Fantasy Football Scout YouTube channel. If you enjoyed this content, hit that bell notification as well, and then you'll never miss any piece of content. And doing all of those things is one of the best ways to help support the channel, help us grow and get to a situation where we're doing the best content we can for you guys so do let us know and if you've got any thoughts on Diaby of course let us know in the comment section as well well with that I will leave you fine folks to enjoy the rest of your FPL tinkering and I will see you next time